Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will be talking about how membrane potential is maintained in the cell. In our previous lecture, we learned that the membrane potential of the cell is negative. That is to say, the outside of the cell is positively charged and the inside of the cell is negatively charged. In this lecture, we will learn about the two types of proteins that contribute to these difference in charges. First, we have the sodium-potassium pump. This is a pump that is highly used in the cell. In fact, it actually accounts for 30% of all ATP use in the cell. And the function of this pump is very simple. First, it pumps sodium ions out and carries potassium ions in. This pump is an example of an active pump. That means it needs to use energy here in the form of ATP. So this pump is also known as the sodium-potassium ATPase. In this figure, we can see how the sodium-potassium pump works. Initially, the protein has a binding site for intracellular sodium. Once sodium attaches to this binding site, the protein then attaches a phosphate group to itself by hydrolyzing ATP. This process, called phosphorylation, then triggers a conformational change in the protein. This means that the protein can then change its shape, and you can see here that it now opens up into the extracellular space. In doing so, it ejects its sodium ion load. Now, there is a free binding site in this protein, and this is where potassium binds. Now, in order to move potassium back into the cell, the protein has to dephosphorylate itself or remove this phosphate group, and in doing so, it changes back into its original shape and ejects the potassium back into the cell. After this, the protein is now ready for another sodium ion to bind to it, and the cycle repeats itself. Next, let's take a look at the different effects of the sodium-potassium pump. Before that though, let's take note of the different electrochemical gradients for sodium and potassium. For sodium, we can see here that there is a high concentration of sodium outside the cell compared to the inside. And in contrast, for potassium, there is a high concentration inside the cell compared to the outside. Another thing that we can notice here is that there is an unequal exchange of positive ions being conducted by our sodium-potassium pump. This means that for every three sodium being put out by the pump, it only takes in two potassium ions. In doing so, this helps create the positive charge on the outside of the cell and the negative charge on the inside of the cell. At the same time, we can see that this pump is responsible for maintaining the different concentration gradients of our ions. As it pumps sodium outside the cell, this maintains the sodium electrochemical gradient and as it pumps potassium back into the cell, this also maintains the potassium electrochemical gradient. Now, these two are very important for the cell to maintain, especially the sodium electrochemical gradient, because this is the gradient that produces the most energy for an animal cell. Now, although the sodium-potassium pump does play a role in maintaining the negative membrane potential of the cell, the role it actually plays is incredibly small. Another protein, which we call our potassium leak channels, are the ones that contribute greatly to the very negative membrane potential of our cell. In this first part of the figure, you can see our potassium leak channels in their closed state. And here you can see that on the extracellular space or the outside of the cell, and on the inside, there is an almost equal distribution of positive and negative ions. Because these are channels, when they open up, the first thing that it does is that it allows for potassium to freely move across the cell membrane. From the previous slide, we learned that potassium has a high concentration on the inside of the cell and a small concentration on the outside of the cell. And this means that naturally, when this channel opens up, it allows potassium to slowly move from the inside to the outside of the cell. In doing so, this allows an aggregation of cations on the outside surface or the extracellular space of the cell. And because these cations have left the inside of the cell, inside the cell there is a decrease 
of cations. And this also means that there is an increase in anions. And this is the one that actually creates the very negative resting membrane potential of our cell. One question you might ask yourself is that if potassium channels allow for the free movement of potassium, how come there is still a high concentration of intracellular potassium in the normal cell? Now, there are actually two forces at work here. The first one is your potassium concentration gradient, wherein there is a high concentration of potassium inside the cell compared to the outside. And this gradient is the one that initially causes potassium from inside the cell to move outward. But there's also another force at work, which we call the voltage gradient. Now remember, potassium is a positively charged ion. So as they exit the potassium leak channel, the outside of the cell becomes increasingly more positive. And since positive substances tend to repel each other, there comes a point wherein the positive charge of the outside of the cell becomes strong enough to repel additional potassium from leaving the cell. So because of this, the cell can still maintain the high concentration of potassium inside the cell, but at the same time, it allows enough potassium to leave the cell to create this very negative inner membrane potential. In this figure, we can see a simplified view of how the membrane potential is maintained by our cell. Without our different channels and pumps, we can see that there is an almost equal concentration of anions and cations on the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. But with our potassium leak channels, and with a bit of help from our sodium potassium pumps, we can see that there is now an aggregation of positive ions or cations on the extracellular surface of the membrane, and on the intracellular surface, we can see an aggregation of anions. So this is why our cells have a very negative charge on the inside compared to the outside. All right, so that ends our very short lecture. If you would like to learn more about the things we discussed, please check out these references. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you in the next video.